morning. Good morning. This week, we pastors in this district received an email from Kathy Jamison on Thursday informing us that there would be an emergency prayer meeting Thursday at noon. And this was, was via Zoom, of course. This was in response to the events that happened in our nation's capital on Wednesday. And I attended the prayer meeting, the Zoom prayer meeting, and heard my colleagues' viewpoints on what had happened and what they planned to preach on this Sunday. Honestly, at that point in the week, I didn't know what I was going to preach on, but after the meeting, I decided uh, that I would preach on a topic that related to Wednesday's events as well. We are blessed to live in the United States of America where we have a remarkable amount of freedom as American citizens. Most of all, perhaps the most significant freedom is we have the freedom to worship. We have the freedom to gather together and worship the one true God, Jesus Christ, and more importantly, to tell other people about how we worship Jesus Christ and to encourage them to do so as well. We say things here in America like uh, when we say the Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance that we are one nation under God. We say, God bless America, but make, a, make no mistake about it, we are citizens first and foremost of the kingdom of heaven before we are Americans. We're blessed to be Americans, but first and foremost, we are citizens of heaven. God does not care about worldly politics. How do we know this? Well, it's several times written in the Bible. A couple of examples I came up with were John chapter 18, verses 35 through 36. Pontius Pilate asked Jesus if he is king of the Jews. And Jesus responds by saying, my kingdom is not of this world, but it is from another place. When Jesus is resurrected from the dead right before he ascends to heaven in Acts chapter 1, Verse 6, his disciples still have politics on the brain. And they say, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus' response is, paraphrasing here, don't worry about that. But in 10 days' time, you'll be blessed with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is, un since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Jesus doesn't care about politics. He doesn't care if Joe Biden won the election or if Donald Trump won the election. He doesn't care if the Democrats are in control of Congress. He doesn't care if Republicans are in control of Congress. A French theologian, Jacques Ellul, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name, once wrote of politics. He said, Politics is the church's worst problem. It is her constant temptation, the occasion of her greatest disasters. It is the trap that is continually set for her by the prince of this world. By the prince of this world, he is referring to Satan, of course. Satan cares about worldly power and worldly politics. How do we know this? Well, Satan tempted Christ when he was in the wilderness with worldly power. He brought Jesus to the top of the mountain and said, All of this, all of these kingdoms of the world can be yours if you just worship me. And how does Christ respond? He says, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus doesn't care about worldly politics, but he does care about how we treat each other. And that leads me to our scripture lesson for today and discussing what happened on Wednesday. 
In our scripture lesson today, Jesus imparts some radical wisdom and radical advice to us. He flips what had been the law of Moses on its head, the law of the Old Testament, and he gives us a new law. In Exodus chapter 21, verse 24, that's where we hear Moses as he imparts the, the law that is given to him by God on Mount Sinai. And he says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, the uh, Indian lawyer and uh, I guess you could say uh, freedom advocate uh, of the early 20th century, Gandhi, he is quoted with saying, an eye for an eye leaves the world, the whole world blind. Now, Gandhi was not a Christian, but we can assume that Jesus Christ would have agreed with that sentiment. Because Jesus tells us in our scripture lesson, you have heard it said, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. He also tells us if somebody sues you and wants your shirt, you should give over your coat too. If somebody wants you to walk a mile with them, you should walk two miles instead. And then he gets to the most radical advice of all. He says, you've heard it said, it was, it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who perse persecute you. That brings me to what happened on Wednesday. Senator Chuck Schumer from New York in a speech before Congress said that January 6, 2021 would join December 7, 1941 as a day that will live in infamy. I heard Roxanne say that she had feelings of September 11, 2001 when she was watching what happened on Wednesday. Now, I don't know if it rises to those levels of infamy and terrible events in United States history. And I won't get into the politics of what happened. Suffice it to say that there are emotions on either side of the issue, whether you call yourself a Democrat, a Republican, or an Independent, are wrong. The feelings about what happened in the election in November what happened on Wednesday are wrong, and I do not fault anybody, will not fault you for your opinion on that issue, whichever way it is. But I will say that the politics that we're currently practicing, the politics of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, will leave the whole world blind. And after Wednesday, it left five people dead. So as we move forward to a new presidential administration, a new leadership of our worldly nation, not our heavenly nation, but our worldly nation, in 10 days' time, I ask you to practice a new kind of personal politics, a radical kind of politics, a politics of radical forgiveness, a politics of of turning the cheek, turning the other cheek, a politics of loving your enemy and praying for those who persecute you. Now, I'm not asking whether you call yourself a, a Democrat or Republican that you need to pray for the other side to succeed politically. You don't have to pray for them to pass some piece of legislation or put somebody on the Supreme Court. But I do ask that you pray for our leaders, regardless of their political party. I ask this week, I issued a challenge, as I issued last week, to pray for somebody that you just can't stand. Somebody that gets under your skin and you say, oh, that person makes it hard to be a Christian, to really love them. Maybe that person for you is Donald Trump. Maybe it's Joe Biden. Maybe it's Nancy Pelosi or Mitch McConnell. Maybe you don't care about politics. Maybe it is a sports figure like Davo Sweeney or 
Nick Saban, who will be coaching a football game tomorrow night. Maybe those kind of people just get on your skin. Pray for them. Maybe it's a coworker that you just can't stand. They just make it, make your life hard. Maybe it's a family member that just gets under your skin. I ask you to pray for them. And what should you pray for for them? Well, in this age of COVID, where we have a deadly pandemic swarming around, first and foremost, pray for their health and safety. But secondly, perhaps more importantly, pray that that person has God first in their life and puts God first in their life because every good thing will flow from that. If that person, whether it's Joe Biden, Donald Trump, whoever, Davos Sweeney, they put God first in their life, everything else will fall into place after that. So let's pray for our enemies. This week, prior to Congress meeting on January 6th, on Wednesday, Vice President Mike Pence wrote a letter to Congress. And the reason he wrote that letter was to tell the members of our Congress that he could not do as President Trump was asking him and refused to count the electoral votes. He also said he could not do nothing and not allow his colleagues on the Republican side to object to the counting of the votes. He felt it was his duty to preside neutrally over the events that happened. But in the last paragraph that he wrote, something that I really latched on to and found significant. He said that four years ago, this time, January 2017, he swore an oath to our country to defend and uphold the Constitution, so help me God. And he took that obligation, that oath that he took, so seriously that he realized it was beyond just a pledge to a document, but a pledge to uphold God's will and uphold a kingdom that was bigger than our own, our own worldly kingdom, but the kingdom of God, something much bigger. I found that admirable that Mike Pence understood that there was a higher calling and something more important than upholding the Constitution of the United States and more important than being vice president. It's my prayer going forward today that us as members of this church called Zion and as members of Christ's larger church, citizens of the kingdom of heaven, that we may too understand the awesomeness of our responsibility as Christians. We're not taking an oath here today, and we didn't take an oath uh, on national TV like Mike Pence did four years ago, and I'm not asking you to take one today. But as Christians, as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we have a responsibility to do things that aren't easy, that aren't always popular. We have to do something that goes against our human nature. We have to pray for our enemies. We have to love our enemies, and when they hit us, we have to turn the other cheek. It's not easy. It's downright difficult. But it's my prayer today that we would approach that obligation that command from Jesus Christ that he gives us in our scriptural lesson today with that same level of awe and reverence that Mike Pence regarded his responsibilities as pre vice president of the United States. So in this day, as we go forward into a new era of leadership for our earthly kingdom, I ask that we practice that personal form of politics of radical forgiveness that we turn the other cheek, that we love our enemies, and that we pray for our enemies. So help us, God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.